Welcome to video lecture series on computer networks. This is part 2 of module 5. In part 1 we discussed about internet control message protocol version 4 and version 6. Let's learn about other protocols in this session. First we will see what is network address translation. This topic is not in syllabus but this is a prerequisite knowledge to understand some protocols in this module. You know IP version 4 addresses are 32 bits long. If you assign a unique IP address to all the machines around the globe this IP version 4 address will expire one day. One solution to the problem is to use a 128 bit long IP version 6 address. But switching from IP version to 4 version 4 to version 6 takes much time. So another solution is network address translation. In network address translation, companies, organization and educational institutions may use a private IP address range. This private IP address range falls into three classes. In class A, we have 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255 and 255. In class B, we have 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.25. And in class C, we have a private IP address range starting from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. So how this works is that a company within a company we have a private IP address range but for the outside world the company is known by a single IP address and this IP address is called a public IP address. So when a packet moves out of the organization instead of the private IP address range it has the public IP address. So let's see how this happened. We have, uh, we consider an organization. This organization have few computers. Uh, they are numbered from 1, 2, 3, 7 and so on. Here 4 is the router, 7 is a server and uh, node 1 is bearing the IP address 10.0.0.1. This packet is about to move out of the organization. Here we have a network address translation box. In this box, this IP address is translated to the public IP address of the company that is 192.60.42.12. So how this happens? We have a network address translation process here uh, which it is installed inside the router. So we have a source machine 1 and a source machine 2. The source machine have an IP address 10.2.2.2 and the port number is 1064. Port number concept uh, we haven't studied it. That comes in transport layer. Port means the point of communication. Okay. If we deliver a product via some cart, e-cart, via e-cart, when the product reaches the house, we can say, uh, reaches the house, that point we can say, the port, okay. So, source machine, so the, how this mapping happens, 10.2.2.2 is mapped to 140.123.101.30. So, this is, here it is mapped and the same port number is put there. But destination IP address and port number remains the same. So, this is another mapping. So this is how it happens. Now moving to moving to address resolution protocol. Simply speaking, ARP or address resolution protocol is, is the process of mapping an IP address to hardware address. An IP address to hardware address. That means a packet when it comes from higher layers. To network layer. Net network layer uh, it is known by the IP address. But when it comes to the data link layer, 
an important data link le protocol we can say ethernet in ethernet every machine is identified by the hardware address which is unique around the globe and this hardware address are 48 bits long it consists of more, more, both alphabets and numbers this 48 bits hardware address is an alpha numeric uh, code okay So why this address resolution protocol? Let's see with an example. We have uh, three interconnected class C networks. We can see F1, F2 and F3. It's a fiber distributed data interface ring. Its IP address is 192.31.60.0. This is inside a college. So we have a computer science department and electrical department. In computer science department, we have three machines, E1, E2, and E3. Sorry, E3 is only point of communication. So okay, E1, E2. And for electrical department, we have E5 and E6. So E3. E3 has two IP address, 192.3160.4 and 192.31.65.1 okay when coming to ethernet to send a packet from one machine to another machine this ip address does is not enough we require the hardware address also for example if machine one want to communicate with the machine two machine one will send an address resolution protocol packet asking I want to know who is 192.31.65.5 return its hardware address this message is broadcasted throughout the network all the machine who, which receives the message will check the IP address if it matches only here in this example only machine 2 matches Machine 2 will respond to machine 1 with its hardware address. This is how address resolution protocol works. So given IP address, return the hardware address. The process is called address resolution protocol. So the working is IP layer that is network layer builds an Ethernet frame containing the IP address whose MAC address is sought, is sought. So we are building an Ethernet frame and inside that Ethernet frame, we are keeping the IP. Okay. IP address uh, and uh, we want to find the corresponding mapping of IP address to, and hardware address. This frame is broadcast throughout the LAN. The frame is not forwarded to other lands. The station which owns the IP address reply with its MAC address. The sender caches the response with time to leave field. So this, what the sender is, it, if the sender wants to send the message for a second time, it will cache this mapping. So a second time, if you want to send the packet, that mapping is already available and it just doesn't need to send ARP packets okay this is ARP working process the main advantage is it is easy to administer and human intervention intervention is less required next is address resolution protocol optimization how to improve the performance of ARP protocol. First suggestion is caching of ARP reply. If the receiver machine is able to memorize the ARP reply that is mapping of hardware and IP address then the second time the same mapping is required it can recollect from the memory. In such case the entry should have a large time to leave field. Then second optimization is sending and when sending an ARP request, piggyback its own IP address and data link layer address. So the 
ഹുവർ മിഷൻ വിച്ച് റിസീവ്സ് ദിസ് എ ആർ പി റിക്വസ്റ്റ് വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ദി ഐ പി അഡ്രസ് ടു ഡാറ്റാ ലിങ്ക് ലിങ്ക് മാപ്പ് മാപ്പിംഗ് ദെൻ തേർഡ് ഒപ്റ്റിമൈസേഷൻ മെത്തേഡ്സ് എവറി മിഷൻ ബ്രോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് മാപ്പിംഗ് അറ്റ് ബൂട്ട് ടൈം സോ ദാറ്റ് ഓൾ അതർ മിഷൻ ക്യാൻ റിസീവ് ഇറ്റ് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് അഡ്രസ് റെസൊല്യൂഷൻ പ്രോട്ടോകോൾ ഒപ്റ്റിമൈസേഷൻ മെത്തേഡ്സ് സോ വി കംപ്ലീറ്റഡ് എ ആർ പി സോ വോട്ട് ഇസ് എ ആർ പി എ ആർ പി ഇസ് ദ മാപ്പിംഗ് ഓഫ് ഐ പി അഡ്രസ് ടു ഹാർഡ്വെയർ അഡ്രസ് this hardware address is also known as data link layer address and medium access control mac address so <clears throat> this ip to hardware address mapping is called a address resolution protocol next is rarp or reverse address resolution protocol so from the name itself it is clear given the hardware address or data link layer address get ip address the reverse process of address resolution protocol this is used by a diskless workstation to get the ip address at the boot time so when a mission when a diskless workstation boot it is it doesn't know the ip address it's only know its hardware address but the ip address known to some server some rrp server or it may be cached by some other machine okay so the machine the discless work station upon booting the it will broadcast its lan address saying this is my hardware address someone can return my ip address so a remote rarp server can responds with its ip address so that is rarp next is boot p or bootstrap protocol this rarp protocol has got a drawback it needs an rarp server on every network okay and this rarp broadcast messages are not forwarded by routers so an rrp rrp broadcast cannot move to another network it is not possible to install an rrp server on every network so there should be a new protocol to overcome this difficulty boot p is one such protocol which uses a udp message this udp messages are forwarded by routers this boot p also provides some additional information such as ip address of file server holding os image subnet mask etc again boot p has some drawbacks it requires manual configuration of tables mapping ip address and hardware address and when a new host is added to lan the boot p cannot be used by the host until an administrator assign it an ip address and enter into the boot p configuration table so this boot p protocol functioning is not auto fully automatic it requires manual intervention there is a, an extension for boot p the protocol is called dynamic host configuration protocol dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol this is not in syllabus but the question is asked in university question paper so we will just discuss the topic this is an this method allow manual and automatic assignment of ip address we have dhcp server that which gives out ip address okay a machine after booting broadcast a dhcp discover packet from which it gets the reply from a dhcp server so here is the working we have a set of nodes this is some other network so this is another network okay this newly booted host when it looks for ip address it sends a dhcp discover packet this dhcp relay will 
forward it to other network and the unicast packet from DHCP relay is forwarded to DHCP server and it will return the IP address. So that is the working of DHCP. Thank you for listening.